Editor's note, the following contains spoilers for episode 5 of the Disney Plus series, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Chapter 5 of Obi-Wan Kenobi was a dream for Star Wars prequels fans. The whole show has been, actually, but episode 5 in particular was a treat. Two decades after its release on theaters, we got to watch scenes set in the same time as Attack of the Clones, with Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen looking like they hadn't aged a day since then. What a time to be a Star Wars fan! The whole episode was set around the premise that, even though he is now all-powerful and has all the might of the Empire at his disposal, Darth Vader still has much to learn. Deborah Chow sets that idea beautifully, alternating scenes set at the present with flashbacks to Vader's, or Anakin's, time as a Padawan learning the ways of the Force under Obi-Wan's tutelage in the Jedi Temple on Coruscant. Everything in the flashback scene is a perfect rebuild of their relationship at that time in the past. Their robes, Anakin's Padawan braids, Obi-Wan's mullets, their friendly banter. And their lightsabers. Collider video of the day. Now, a lightsaber is the ancestral weapon of the Jedi. In Attack of the Clones, Anakin briefly loses his and Obi-Wan gives him an earful because of that, stating that this weapon is your life. Although Obi-Wan doesn't mean that literally, a lightsaber is a reflection of the Jedi who wields it. Its core element, the Kyber Crystal, resonates in the Force in a tune that only its master recognizes. It's an intimate relationship between warrior and saber, one that, as we see with Anakin and Obi-Wan throughout the prequels, and now in Obi-Wan Kenobi, also has an influence on how the saber looks. During the flashbacks, both Anakin and Obi-Wan still have their old lightsabers, from before the Battle of Geonosis. Obi-Wan's was taken from him upon his capture by Count Dukas, Christopher Lee, Separatist forces, while Anakin's is split in half in the droid factory, Obi-Wan's gonna kill me, he moans to himself when it happens. They both fought Dooku with spare sabers lent to them by their Jedi peers. That's better than having no lightsaber at all, but, for a Jedi, it's still pretty embarrassing, and perhaps one of the reasons Dooku was able to beat them so easily. What's interesting about the lightsaber connection to the Jedi is how the weapon's design evolves with their master over time. Take Obi-Wan's saber in the flashbacks, for example. The hilt has the exact same design as his Padawan lightsaber, which he lost while fighting Damal, Ray Park, in The Phantom Menace. He grew up almost a decade since then, became a Jedi Knight and has his own Padawan learner, but still carries his apprentice design around. Obi-Wan Kenobi does a good job in the first episodes of making it clear that our hero still misses his master, Qui-Gon Jinn, Liam Neeson. While we may think this is something exclusive to the show, Obi-Wan's saber in the flashback reveals otherwise. Apart from his beard and mullets, he is almost exactly the same person he was when he lost his master. This goes to say he still sees himself as a learner and student, even if now he has his own apprentice. He may repeat the deep quotes and teachings he heard in his own years of training, but, behind all those platitudes, he was still trying to figure this whole teaching thing out. To grow past these struggles, Obi-Wan had to lose his weapon and build a new one from scratch just as Hess had to rebuild himself. In Obi-Wan Kenobi, he forsakes his weapon as a reflection of his own lack of connection to the Force. Once he accepts he needs it, this weapon is your life, remember, he is able to walk the Jedi path again. Eventually, his hilt will be the model for the future of the Jedi, influencing Luke Skywalker's, 
Mark Hamill, own design in Return of the Jedi. Anakin's saber is a bit more straightforward than that, as everything usually is with him. He is still not using the so-called Skywalker saber, the original Graflex design created by George Lucas for A New Hope, but the weapon he designed while still a Padawan. That saber's hilt is exactly the same as the one he would eventually come to use as Darth Vader. This can be explained in simple terms, that design has a better feel in his hand than the Skywalker saber. It's reasonable since it's a fighting tool, so it has to be easy and comfortable in the hand. But that's not just it. Anakin tries so hard to be a straightforward person, but, deep down, he is this layered storm of emotions. When he achieves the rank of Jedi Knight and ceases to be a Padawan, he builds the Skywalker Saber, and it becomes his signature weapon. It remains so up until the moment he falls to the dark side of the Force and loses the battle against his former mentor, Obi-Wan, in Revenge of the Sith. That represents a shift in his relationship with this kind of weapon. He ceases to be a full-fledged Jedi warrior to become one of only two Sith in the galaxy. Always two there are, a master and an apprentice. No surprise there, Vader is the apprentice. He goes back to the learning chair, and his lightsaber is a reflection of that, with the exact same mold as his Padawan hilt. The main difference is in the colors, while Anakin's is silver and white with only a few stripes of black, Vader's is mostly black with only a few stripes of silver. This is an interesting forecasting tool that George Lucas first used on Attack of the Clones, that gathers more layers with this week's episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi. By now, both Anakin and Obi-Wan's most iconic sabers are the ones we see in Revenge of the Sith. They are the ones we want when shopping for replicas. But they are not the most revealing when it comes to their masters. A lightsaber is a Jedi's life and does way more than fighting and making cool sounds. It tells a life story, 